Hey everyone, it's Jados X and welcome to Minitop Monday. Have you ever spent hours rendering a video from 3ds Max only to find it looking like this? Well, today I'm going to show you how to get the best quality renders possible by rendering with image lists. It's actually pretty simple to set up and should only take a couple of minutes. When you go to set up your render, the only thing you have to do differently occurs in the render output dialog. The first thing you have to do is browse to the location where you want to save your render. The next thing you're going to want to do is to create a folder to store the imageless 3ds Max renders. This is because an image list is in fact just every single frame rendered out and saved as an individual image. The next thing you're going to want to do is to choose your file name. I recommend adding an underscore after the end of the file name. This is because 3ds Max is going to append the frame number to every image it renders, and separating this from the file name itself makes it easier to compose it back into a video later. The magic happens when you go to pick your file format. To make sure 3ds Max renders in an image list, all you have to do is pick a picture format as your output format. To get the most out of your renders, the best file format to pick is PNG, because it's lossless, it's compressible, and also stores opacity. It's a good idea to avoid lossy formats such as JPEG, or formats which are uncompressible such as BMP. After that's done, you're going to want to open the setup dialog and make sure RGB 24-bit is selected. The reason for this is because our screens only output 24-bit color, and anything else will just be wasted. In 3ds Max, the main location you're going to see transparency on your renders is where the background of the render is showing. As a result, it's a good idea to leave alpha channel checked, because you can actually remove the alpha channel and get back your full background later if you want, but it gives you the option. For a tutorial on how to do that in After Effects, you can either click the annotation right here or the link in the description below. Once that's done, you can hit save and are just about ready to render. The last thing to consider is if you'll need an image sequencing file. I've found this mostly non-essential, but if you decide you need one, all you have to do is select which image sequencing file you'd like and check the box. If you decide you want to get one after your render's finished, all you have to do is press the Create Now button. And that's it. Once you've rendered, you'll find your entire image list in your output folder. Rendering to an image list has several distinct advantages and disadvantages. Some of the big advantages are that you get a copy of each frame, which is great for still shots, it means you don't have to go into the video itself and pull one out. It also means that if there's a power outage, because you've saved each individual frame, you don't lose your entire render, and each frame is going to have full quality, provided that you picked a lossless image format. The disadvantage with this obviously though is that you're going to have some larger render sizes than if you just render to a video, but I think it doesn't really matter too much because you get the guarantee of full quality. It also means that you can't pause the render, it only means you can cancel, but this isn't too bad because if you cancel you'll still get all your output up until that point. It also means that you can't render a video with audio from 3ds Max, it's an unbeknownst feature but you can actually create uh, video renders with audio straight from 3ds Max, but I don't know anyone who does this. I like to composite my audio in after the render, so this shouldn't be too much of a disadvantage. It also means though that you need another program afterwards to composite these image lists back into a video later. To help you out on this one a bit, I've done a tutorial on how to create a video from image lists using After Effects. You can check that out using the annotation here, or you can check the link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Minitup Monday. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope you've learned something.